But there is some reality in that we we know medically that people with red red hair, for example, right, especially uh, descendants of um, the Irish, tend to have certain genetic predispositions that other white people don't have, which is to say under the conditions where they're administered with anesthesia, anesthesia, they tend to wake up during surgery midway. They have something weird in terms of their tolerance for anesthetics. And what, how, how do you thread this needle? Because there are genetic haplotypes, right? And there is a concept of ethnicity. And we know that because we can sequence all our DNA and trace our lineage. How, and, and race is an imperfect, often sometimes wrong mapping of, you know, certain categories above ethnicity. So there is something real underneath race, but it's not entirely accurate. So how do you thread the needle? Because medically and biologically, we do see, you know, at the genetic level that there are differences between humans. Absolutely. But they don't fall into the, you know, just say roughly five boxes that we put people in, right? right? There's no concordance between the kind of differences that you are talking about, which are real. So let's take the, the one that seems to be associated with the color of hair that people who are considered white racialized, right? So what's beneath that? Like what's really going on mm. there? You know, so there are certain human beings who doubtless, you know, because of their ancestry have um, adopted, you know, some traits genetically that express in a certain way that in certain contexts will make them susceptible to this or that, right? Um, sickle cell is one of those things, right? Yeah. You know, we think of it sort of grossly, you know, as this black identified thing. We know it's not, you know, there can be some overlap and black like gets used as a proxy for it, but that's yeah. really messy, especially if we're talking about science. There are population differences, there are genetic yep. differences, and I'm at this point kind of okay with referring to some of that stuff as ethnicity, because I think that's a messy concept mm. too. But mm. we are now able to be really specific about that. And if we did yeah. race according to that, I don't know how many races we've had. We've had, we've had we would have thousands of races, you know, based yeah. on the different sort of genetic makeup of people that make them susceptible to this or that. That is right. the job of science. That is actually what people are doing right now. And one of the things that's exciting to me is that, you know, when I periodically sort of try to take a deep dive into how medicine is treating race, it's using race less and less as a proxy, you know, and there are more voices within, you know, the realms of biology, certainly genetics, but also just the medical field who are saying, we need to be a bit more explicit, you know, about what we are saying and talking about here, because the fast and dirty use of that proxy is missing a whole lot and perpetuating what is essentially, you know, sort of racism. Mm. And what I love about like the two pieces of conversation we just had is that you both do a nice job, really, I think, um, honoring and respectfully articulating what people have with moving away from our current sort of attachment to race. But in your mm. articulation of it, you actually say the right thing, right? You get to the things that are there. So what's wrong with using race? It's exactly wrong because of the things that you said. It's about characteristics in terms of, you know, Edward, um, Angel, you're um, sort of speaking of it. And Melissa, you know, you did a nice job capturing that it's about genetics, right? It's about haplotypes. You know, it's not about red hair. Red hair might be a proxy, but I bet there's some people right. with red hair who have this trait too, right? right. I mean, without red mm -hmm. hair, who have this trait too. Yeah. Yeah. The, the complexity yeah. of genetics is hilarious to me in, in this context. Because I always bring this example up of, you know, the genetic diversity within the continent of Africa is greater than the rest of the world combined. And Absolutely. yet based on be. our, right. yeah, right. Like by necessity, it's just the way it's the way it works. But by our metrics, that entire continent pretty much would be racialized as black. They would all be put into yep. the same box, despite that insane amount of genetic diversity. That's and right. if we were to really right. get into it, you know, every genetic subgroup is a race. There would be probably hundreds of races just in the continent of Africa. You know, That's so exactly <laughs> right. You know, at some yeah. point we will, we will, I won't see it because I'm getting old, but at some point we will have literally personalized medicine. 
right? We should. Somebody yeah. will read, you know, your your genetic sequence and figure out what works best for you or not. Um, mm-hmm. And there may be some similarities between you and somebody who looks like you, and there may not be, but that's going to become moot, right? We can go right. deeper than that. 